May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention? Welcome to Insights. I'm Eric. Thanks for stopping by after the market close for the week. We have a Friday close. We have updated the energy bills, and there's a lot of things to talk about. I want to talk about, in particular, is just go over the grain market and throw some things out there. We see these markets here. We're looking at corn, uh, soybeans, and wheat. Um, two of them are in double up alignment. We don't have triple alignment. Wheat is struggling in comparison to the other three. We have cotton in double up, and that's not considered a, uh, a grain. It's definitely in the agricultural, and we're going to take a look at why they are all related to one another and how closely they track one another. But what we see after Friday, when we saw in particular, and we've talked about this week for everyone who's been watching some of the reviews and the report updates and individual repeat reviews. We have them for cotton. We have them for soybeans. We have them for corn. We have them for wheat. I would check them out. Uh, you can buy them uh, two for one right now. Um, the whole point is, is to get this thing started because you can't can't really subscribe to one report or even talk about one without really watching all the updates they are highly interconnected and we're going to see why in just a second but for now um, we're going to leave some of the details of the evolution of the trade that's the trading discipline that we follow inside uh, the matrix it's right up here everyone who subscribes can pull this version of their own version of the matrix down you click this link you're going to get a, a link to the page and it's going to talk about the four phases of the evolution of the trade we are talking about life cycles of trades and the grain market, which has a pretty wide and diverse following, has been up between 22 and 24 months. Computers starting to say, hey, it's getting a little bit old, but we we can talk about how old that's really getting in the individual reports. But what we have been talking about is a market that's showing some signs of turning. It had an energy build. We've talked about that for weeks right down here. The grains DI, it was, it was concentrated, it was above 40. And, it, and, and the DI2 continues to move higher. It's now slipped below that. It was almost uh, it was pretty close to 60 not too long ago. 50, 51, 52 is pretty high. Still relatively quiet market. WA is 15. This is a characteristic of a accumulation. It may not be powerful accumulation across the board. We almost even see finally wheat has got the DI2 almost above zero. That means we are pulling still accumulation. The from one Tuesday to the next, the energy builds vary. And they rarely, the invisible hand rarely chases into strength. So you usually have to have a decline. And what you're most interested in, if you're following the primary trend, and these primary trends are all here, they're in the BU for bull column. Here's the date, time in months, 22, 24 months. Here's the percentage in terms. But this is all bullish. So what we're mostly concerned is when there's a sell-off, it can be a daily, week, daily sell-off, Short-term sell-off, intermediate term, weekly sell-off. We still have the weekly trends down and across the grains. So these are markets that are in consolidation, although that consolidation is starting to shift. But what you're most concerned when you have a sell-off is whether or not the invisible hand is accumulating. That's what we watch energy for. Energy has been picking up and it's been building up, and that's something we've been talking about. One of the biggest energy build is cotton. You're saying, well, why is cotton even related to this? And again, we're going to have to get to that in a second. And we're going to talk about the powerful move that took place. Cotton Report talks about this setup of this energy build, one of the biggest ones inside the matrix. And that, and that stands alone. Again, you have to go into the individual report to understand what's going on. But what we're seeing is we're seeing these markets starting to move. We had talked about coils and these are fibonacci coils these are coils within cause building a side weight action we sold off fell down the elevator shaft everyone freaks out it's over we call a call a top and everything now we weren't talking about that because the primary trends in all these markets were still up but what we were watching is as we dipped really low was the energy builds high and in the answer for bale which is cotton this is the tracker that we use inside the matrix. There was quite a bit of accumulation. Now, what we did is we created a coil within that bottom formation. People want to call them heads and shoulder bottoms or trading ranges or whatever. It doesn't matter. What we're looking for is a movement against it, some type of range. And then we look at these coils. Inside of that, they create geometric forecasts. Most people view it as the distance between this line and this line, but that's 
worlds don't work in linear fashion. I don't even know why they teach that stuff. But they do. That gets the most play. Probably easy to understand. There's growth rates are geometric and trends are geometric as well. So many there's links inside the computer. I'm going to show you one in particular. You can click this link right in this side of the trends tab all the way towards the end. You put in this coil. This is a, what you call geometric coil from here to here. And it's going to generate some forecasts. And clearly, once we closed above that high, it was triggered. And this was a trigger a few days ago. Now we're heading to those forecasts. We talked about them before. Or you can go look at them yourself inside the matrix and generate those forecasts. The well, point is, is cotton's taken off. It's broken the coil. And if you look at the, you're going to get three targets, targets one, two, and three. You're going to see they're a lot higher than we are today. And then you're going to be thinking, well, what do I do now? I mean, Chase, well, fact is we're still waiting for a reset, but the computers had the long core position. We've had a long core position in cotton for 24 months, very similar to these markets down here. It's 86%. It's leading. Um, it's one of the leaders, but it's it's broken the coil first. We slide down here. We can see corn. Corn's yeah, it's about ready to break the coil too. It's got a different coil, different slightly different pattern, different timing. Yeah, but we're toiling with 25 and a half, 25, 7, 9. You probably want to clear this whole little zone here. But once we get above that, it's going to be the same as here, and you're going to get three targets, and those targets are not going to be the distance from here to here. Probably going to retest the highs. Why do we care about any of this? Well, it's we're going to again. We're getting to that. Uh, wheat is uh, the next one. It's got it's got a consolidation. We're seeing accumulation. It's not fantastic, but it's still accumulation as we've hit into the decline. It's creating a coil. We have a coil from here to here, but we're not as close to it as the rest. So everybody's thinking wheat's not going to go anywhere. You know, okay. You can think that, I guess. I mean, it's, we're just going to react once the coil goes. It's academic. We do have to get above 1054 is where everything fell. And it held at the important level at 792. So I don't see anything that's going too bad. But why are we doing all this? Why are we talking about these coils? And why are we even talking about cotton, corn, all the same? Well, I'm going to open up one database here. We usually do this in the reports. And I, this is usually restricted content. But we're opening this up right here. We're going to let people see what's going on, see how we look at these markets. I'm going to find this database. I'm going to open up the grains long term. We're going to take a look at some of these correlations. Takes a little bit to load up and you pop them through and you can see them here. So these are the correlations of the three major markets, grain markets. This is corn and soybeans, corn and wheat right here. This is soybeans and wheat. And the thing is, is higher this number is closer to one, the tighter things are. Really tight markets are corn and soybeans and, and corn and wheat, extremely tight. Soybeans and wheat is pretty tight. And it's like 0.77. These, these, they get they kind of decouple at times here. It's decoupling, then it tightens up at other times. Fact is, probably the long-term correlation is probably about 0.9%, which is a very strongly correlated. These markets don't move exactly in the same timing, time frame, timing exactly, but if one goes, they tend to all go eventually. So why are we even paying attention to what cotton's doing? Well, here's the correlation between cotton. I've already established that corn is highly correlated between soybeans and wheat. It's almost a one, but then corn and cotton have a 0.85 correlation, which is almost one just as well. It's just a little bit lower than this. So the fact is, is, if we go and we'll head back to the matrix here, if we take a look at here and we see where we've broken the coil, we jumped the creek. We're not in triple alignment, but we're taken off and we went limit up. How long before it's going to pull the rest of these? Now, people say that they can disconnect. Oh, wheat's never going to go. Corn's never going to go. Yeah, that might be not going tomorrow, but these markets move with, you know, they're, they're almost one-to-one. -one. 0.9 is about one-to-one, -one, and that's what you round these up. These correlations between these four markets here is, is, is really, it, it, they're super tight. And actually, I didn't bring out soybeans, which if I did, and I missed that one, but they're very similar. Soybeans is in here too. It's got another coil here and it's ready to take off. I mean, I, I don't want to spend the time to pull up the chart. 
so what we have here is we have a market that it's clearly whatever is triggering this and people will claim it to be the fundamentals it, it's pulling ahead and we're seeing similar types of chart patterns in the stock market as well across the board critical inputs for the agricultural markets as well fertilizer everything if you're sitting on risk off yeah yeah you should be sweating bullets but I'm, i don't know what people are going to do the whole point is is we just follow the matrix and we watch these things we know where the odds are and we know that the grain market has a pretty pretty strong uh correlation and it has a fairly good energy build which is down here at 15 38 and 11. we can go read any more of these old reports some of these are open most of them are restricted and you can see we've talked about this in this pattern we've seen this We've seen this movie before. I've said that before and several times even today. This is not something that's new and it's it's just happening again. Eventually it will call everything up and then, you know, everybody was bearish is going to go and run and hide and try and figure out what the heck just happened. We're going to play this by the number numbers, which means we're going to wait for triple up in order to really assess this. But quite frankly, we've been long these markets because the primary trends have been up. So we haven't turned bearish. I'm sure we've caught a lot of consternation because of that and a lot of negative comments or some not as many it's hard to talk against the computer the computer is pretty objective it's probably the most objective tool that i know whereas people talk out of both sides of their mouth and, and sometimes off the back end and it's they're not reliable so the computer is far more reliable primary trends have stayed up they remain up and even though we're waiting for triple alignment technically waiting for a reset it is likely only a matter of time, especially as the cotton market leads away and breaks the coil and jumps the creek. If you have any comments or questions, let us know. We can only encourage you to follow the rest of these reports that are online. Go to the top of the website um, and you find the reports uh, in the menu title and click that. And you can buy these individually. But you really shouldn't be following these reports without getting access to the matrix. So it's something something to think about i can't force you guys to do anything but i'm sure it'll be well worth your time thanks for watching keep an eye on the grain markets keep an eye on the leadership from the cotton and trying to don't worry so much about why it's doing something but rather the fact that these markets are interconnected and that they will follow one another that's the real take-home message here so thanks for watching and enjoy your weekend